Today's question involves plants, and we're looking at photosynthesis and respiration in plants. So our question is, how can we prove that plants take in carbon dioxide when light is available, aka photosynthesis, but release carbon dioxide, or do respiration, when light is not available? So plants produce their own energy, produce their own food by collecting energy from the sun, and this is called photosynthesis. Um, and humans and other animals do respiration, which means that we have to eat food and do things to make our energy. Um, but we're going to do an experiment today that shows that plants actually do both photosynthesis and respiration. So in photosynthesis, they are taking in carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. But in respiration, which is what humans do, we take in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. All right, so today's experiment, and I heard a lot of great ideas from students about different things that you could do to prove this, including something about putting a mouse into a room with a plant and all kinds of great ideas. But today we're going to do something that involves a chemical indicator. It's called bromothymol blue. And it is a chemical indicator that indicates the presence of carbon dioxide. And because this is a semi-poisonous chemical, we're going to use goggles. The first thing we're going to do is just set up a control so that we can see what BTB looks like just by itself. There's a little bit in there. And we're going to just hold up something white behind it so that you can see the color. And that's going to serve as our control. Then I'm going to take a straw and I'm going to blow into this. And as I blow into it, Let's put something white behind it. You'll be able to see a color change. Okay, so you should be able to see the color has changed now to yellow. All right, so we're going to put this, we're going to put some of it in one beaker, one container, and some of it in the other. All right, so now we have two that are yellow and one that is blue. And in one of the ones that is yellow, we're going to just take a little sample of this Elodea. It's an aquatic plant, but since it's a plant, um, we can expect it to behave a certain way when light is available versus when light is not available. So we're going to put a plant in one of these, and we will just push it down with this straw. And we're going to make sure the plant is submerged. Okay, so the color change that just happened happened because of the carbon dioxide was being dissolved into the water. So now we have these three tubes. Hopefully you can see them. Two are yellow, one is blue. And you're going to think about what might happen to the colors of these three tubes. Hopefully you can see that. What will happen to the colors? This one looks green because there's a plant in it, but it's really the same color as this right now. What will happen to these colors if we put these tubes in the light versus if we put them in the dark? So we'll come back and look for that later. We are back. A little bit of time has passed, and we're going to see what has happened to our samples in the light versus the ones that we put in the dark. So let's take a look at the ones that are in the light first. And in the middle is what we can see was our sample with the plant in it. On the right is the sample with the BTB that we blew the carbon dioxide into. And on the left is our control of BTB by itself. So that was the one in the light. Here is the one that was in the dark. And again, you can see the one with the plant in it is in the middle, and that one, you can take a look at the color. So BTB is a indicator of carbon dioxide. It turns blue when there is no carbon dioxide present, and it is yellow when there is carbon dioxide present. So given that information, what is this telling us about what plants do in the light versus what they do in the dark. The one in the light 
versus the one in the dark. Dark, light. 